Let us pray. A great God in heaven, we thank you very much for bringing us here today. Thank you, Lord, because we want to be like Jesus. And we are praying that this year will be more and more like Jesus in Jesus' name. And we are praying, O oh Lord, that your grace and your strength, your power, and your presence within us will help us to march on and will march on to victory in Jesus' name. Help every one of us, Lord, so that this year things will be better than it was last year and the previous time of our lives in Jesus' name. We pray that in every life represented here and in all our families, you will be glorified in every life in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, that your spirit will be with us. We'll live and work and move and do everything according to the teaching of your word. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we're looking at climbing and conquering through prayer. Climbing and conquering through prayer. Prayer that is scriptural praying can move mountains out of the way in a shorter time than atomic bombs can do. Prayer if it is the right kind of prayer, can be very mighty and very powerful. And if the church is ever going to be set on fire, if hard hearts are ever going to be melted, if we are going to reach the lost for Christ, and if our victory over sin and dominion over Satan is going to be real and permanent, it will be because we are prevailing in prayer that we spend more time talking to God and less time talking to men. And by the grace of God, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk to God. We're going to pray. And the Lord is going to answer our prayers. In Psalm 18, reading from verse 2. Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. He's telling us you need to be of the frame of mind, of the decision. That you are going to trust the Lord. In fact, it says in that verse 2 is my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Then he makes a commitment. He says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And then he tells us what we will do. As a result of the strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord in his life, as a result of that prayer in verse 29. For by thee, I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. His watch, the watch of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God except save the Lord? And who is a rock except or save our God? In verse 43, it tells us, Thou hast delivered me. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. And thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. It will be a new experience in your life. In uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 37. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 37. Nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor past, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you can pray, if we can pray this year, there will be a strong persuasion within your heart. That nothing on earth, nothing coming from hell, nothing in the sky, nothing anywhere will be able to separate you from the Lord. You'll be steady and steadfast in the way of the Lord and the will of the Lord all through this year. You know, if all the children of God will be faithful in prayer and hold on on our knees and prevail before quitting, we will be strong this year. We'll be more than conquerors this year. No one can be a mighty spiritual warrior. No one can be a spiritual giant without spending much time in prayer and in the word of God. To be strong and to be victorious, we have to consecrate and rededicate ourselves to God in intercessory prayer and supplication. 
If we do what God's people did in Bible days, we won't have the purity and the power that those people in the Bible that they had. Not only that, if we will do what the Holy Bible says to do, then we will see just what will happen. Great and mighty things will happen. I'm challenging you that you will rededicate yourself and consecrate yourself to really pray. Taking every problem to the Lord in prayer. There are three points we're going to consider. Number one, private, personal, prevailing prayer. That you will make it a matter of duty, a matter of responsibility. It will be the second nature to you that there will be that private, personal, prevailing prayer. Number two, purity, our power in prayer. Many people have not known the power, the profit, and the things we possess. If we can have purity, it makes you very strong in prayer. Number three, the power and the possession of praying people. We go to number one private personal prevailing prayer when genesis the familiar passage genesis chapter 32 reading from verse 24 and jacob was led alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day you know if you're going to have the victory in your life there are times you have to be alone with god in prayer there are times you have to talk alone unto God. There are times you will get away from the crowd and get away from the public and just present your cares, casting all your cares upon the Lord. In verse 26, and he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. You see, there are people that quit before the victory comes. There are people that quit before they become triumphant. There are people, they pray a little, the answer has not come. The darkness has not been dispelled. The power of Satan has not been broken. The victory has not been given to them. They have not possessed what they are expecting from heaven, and they quit. They stop praying. But this man, Jacob, he said, I will not let you you go except you bless me that's the holy persistence that's the holy sacred determination that the lord is expecting from you and from me this year that when you kneel to pray or when you stand to pray and you are praying according to the word of god and you are presenting those promises before the lord you will not quit you will not stop praying until the answer actually comes it will be a determination that not only in the church and not only at home everyone where you find yourself, you will not let him go until he drops the blessing upon you. Commenting about uh, Jacob, we have Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12, reading from verse 4. This is a comment about Jacob. If you look at it from verse 3, he took his brother by the heel in the womb. And then it says, and by strength, he had power with God. He had power with God. And when you have power with God, you have authority on earth. You have dominion over spirits, devils, and Satan. And then in verse 4, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept, that's in prayer. He cried out his heart, that's in prayer. He poured out his heart, that's in prayer. He made his need and the urgency of that need known unto the Lord in prayer. He went and he made supplication unto him. And he found him in Bethel. And there he spake with us. There Jacob appears to be speaking with us. He said, I overcame because I prayed. You can overcome because you pray. Over there, he is speaking to us. He said, did you see my holy persistence? Did you see my sacred determination? Did you see my importunity? Did you see that I held on until the answer came? And then he's telling us, you hold on and the answer will come. Private, personal, persistent, prevailing prayer. We're looking at Luke chapter 18. We look at what Jesus Christ said. A great lesson that he taught us concerning prayer. If we are going to live a better life, a shining life, that the Lord will put a shine on your face. That the Lord will just make you to see the backside of the devil and give you the victory that you never had before. In Luke chapter 18, reading from verse 1. And he spake a parable to them, unto this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faith. What a wonderful thing if you and I will make the decision. Every problem that comes to us personally, every problem that comes in the family, every problem that comes to us in the church, that men ought always to pray. Don't grumble, pray. Don't murmur, pray. 
Don't fight, pray. Don't suppose, pray. Don't criticize, pray. Don't give up, pray. Don't commit suicide, pray. You know, if we can just pray that whatever the devil may bring to you as a temptation, as a trial, and you say, I'm not going to do it the way I used to do it. I'm not going to react the way I used to react. I'm not going to give up and easily get discouraged the way I used to do. I will pray. Men ought always to pray. Always morning, afternoon, and evening. Always when things are good and when things are bad. Always when the enemies are there, when the friends are there. Always when there is a job and when there is not a job. Always in whatever situation you and I may find ourselves, men ought always to pray and not to fail. Saying, now he gives us an illustration. There was in his city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. The problem was too much for the woman. The adversary and the enemy, they were putting it so much on the woman. And she went to the judge and said, avenge me, rescue me, and do the right for me, give me my right. And he would not for a while. He would not for a while. You may pray for five minutes and the answer may not come for a while. You may even pray for a day and the answer may not come for a while. We're talking about private, personal, prevailing, persistent praying. It didn't come for a while and it will not for a while but afterward he said within himself though i fear not god nor regard man yet because this woman troubled me i will avenge her less by a continual coming she weary me remember this was the parable jesus himself told he was buttressing the fact he was emphasizing the fact that men ought always to pray and not to faith you see we give up too soon i have prayed i have not been healed we give up i have prayed that and i have not been saved we give up i have prayed i have not been sanctified and then we give up i have prayed and that bad habit has not been broken and then we give up i have prayed and my life Life is not better yet and then we give up he said always to pray don't give up a continual coming and then the lord said in verse 6 and the lord said hear what the unjust judge said and shall not god here is the application here is the conclusion of the lord jesus christ himself when he said if you will pray persistently shall not god avenge his own elect wonderful his own elect if you are born again you are the elect of the lord if you are born again you are the beloved of the Lord. If you are born again, you hold a special place in the mind of God, in the heart of God, in the kingdom of God. Since you are God's elect, why don't you take the opportunity and then say, I'm a special man. I'm a special woman. I'm born again. My name is in the book of life. I'm the elect of God. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry our often? day and night not only on sunday morning not only on monday evening not only on thursday evening they cry unto him they pour out their heart unto him day and night unto him don't he be along with them and then he says i tell you he will avenge them what's the next word speedily he will do it this year is going to answer your prayer you will tell the devil, I will not give up until I conquer you. You will tell that sickness, I will not give up until you quit my life. You will tell that affliction, I will not give up until you leave. See what other people have done in Psalm 55. Psalm 55, reading from verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. He will rescue you. He will deliver you. And if you are still a sinner, as you call upon the Lord, he says, I will call upon the Lord, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud. You see that? Not a kind of prayer you are praying, and then you are sleeping. Not a kind of prayer you are praying, and you are whispering something, and before you know it, you have slept off. I will cry aloud. I will pray to the Lord, and he shall hear my voice. He has delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me for there were many with me now you will see there that that man made a commitment he was going to pray and he was going to pray morning noon and evening he was going to pray continually calling upon the lord and it was going to be a continual sin in daniel chapter 6 daniel chapter 6 reading from verse 10 now when daniel knew 
that the writing was signed. He went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, morning and noon and evening. He was not just doing it to ease his conscience. He was not just doing it to fulfill all righteousness. He was not just doing it to just have the regular quiet time and the regular devotion. He was really going before the presence of the Lord, and he was really praying three times a day. Remember at this time, they had said, if anybody will call upon the Lord 30 days, that person will be thrown into the lion's den. There was a threat to his life if he prayed. But he said, I'm going to overcome that threat. I'm going to overcome that affliction. I'm going to overcome that decree if I continue in prayer. If you are praying and you are problem, it is not by stopping the prayer that the problem will stop. It is by continuing in prayer. He was praying to the Lord and the people hated him. He was praying to the Lord and they made a new decree. He was praying to the Lord and they threatened him. They were going to throw him to the lion's den. He said, I'm not going to escape that enmity of the unbelievers if I stop praying. It is if I continue praying, I will have the victory. I want to tell you, it is not by stopping to come to church, you overcome your problems. It is not by stopping to worship God that your problems will be over. It is not by stopping prayer that your problems will be solved. It is by continuing to pray and we shall continue in Jesus' name. I said we shall continue in Jesus' name. And he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. And he prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He will not allow anything to hinder him. He continued as he did aforetime. Let me show you one secret. Why his prayer was answered. He prayed in the word. He prayed according to the word. He prayed through the word. He prayed by the word. You see, when you are praying, the word of God shall be very near you. So that you read that word, on the basis of what you read in that word, you pray. And it is by that word, and through that word, and in that word, upon that word, under the authority of that word, you are basing your prayer. It's in Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I searched my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. You see that? He knew the word of God. On the basis of what he knew in the word of God, he he prayed in the word. He prayed by the word. He prayed through the word. He prayed under the authority of the word. And you see, as we are talking about this prayer, it will take real time. You are waiting upon the Lord. You are standing before the Lord. You are committing yourself to it. And you are seeking the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul. It's not a half-hearted thing. It is not something you are not concentrating on. It is not something you are just doing just to do it. We're told in Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 12 and 13. Then shall ye call upon me. Will you call upon the Lord? And ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord will hearken to your prayer. The Lord will answer all your requests. But look at the condition in verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. It takes total concentration. It takes giving yourself completely unto the Lord. Someone said, give me a place to stand and I will move the world. The Christian can say, give me a chance to pray and I will move the hand of God and shake the world. I'm telling you that if you will have that chance to pray and you commit yourself to that praying, you will move the hand that moves the universe and you will shake the world. You know, if more people will take more time to pray, lives will be changed, situations will be changed, and the world will be become a better place to live in if our hearts will grasp the full import and the impact and the power of prayer and what it means to the born again Christian we will prevail with God and with men you know what prayer can do prayer can turn the ways of the wicked upside down you know what prayer can do prayer can conquer sin prayer can save the soul prayer can destroy the works of the devil prayer can change the heart of Esau and overturn the plans of malicious enemies you know what prayer can do prayer can stop the ongoing march oncoming march of overwhelming hordes of workers of darkness and destruction prayer can sweep away depression spiritual depression 
financial depression, mental depression, physical depression. The records of God's word show that those who concentrate and consecrate to pray, they are the people that conquer in life. There is a holy persistence in prevailing prayer. And God honors that faith and honors that kind of determination in prayer. Great answers to prayer are the privilege of those who show holy persistence and deep determination to what to get what God has promised them. That leads us to a point number two now, and that's purity. Our power in prayer. Purity, our power in prayer. Show me a man that goes on his knees and never stands at attention and hell begins to shake. And I will show you a man that is holy and pure. And because of that purity, because of that holiness, he has awesome power. Great power. Terrific power in prayer. Only very few people know this awesome power and this awesome irresistible authority that believers have in prayer. Why is this so? Because many so-called Christians are ignorant of their place in Christ, their position in Christ, their privilege in Christ. Why is this so? Many children of God depend upon others who are no closer to God than themselves to represent them before prayer. You know many people who are even born again, they are saved, they are children of God. They do not take time to read the Bible and see the promises of God in the word of God. They will go to other people and say pray for me they lean upon other people pray for me they depend upon others pray for me but you can pray but the promises are yours and if you are holy and pure you have awesome power and dominion and authority and it is yours and you will pray yourself and the lord will answer your prayer in james chapter 5 from verse 16 james 5 16 the power in prayer which is a purity confess your faults one to another and pray one for another if you want to be mighty in prayer powerful in prayer you will never hide any sin and you will never allow guilty conscience to bog you down if there is something you have done which shouldn't have been done you make a confession of it you make your restitution then you have that purity and that awesome power that you need to have in prayer confess your faults one to another and it says and pray one for another that ye may be healed you know sometimes it's not just a going and praying and praying and praying that's not what gets us healed it's not just a fasting and fasting and fasting that gets us healed when there is a fault when there is a sin when there's something you are covering and you confess it and you expose it and you apologize to the people you have offended and you confess it before the lord and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses you from all unrighteousness and then you come back to pray the promises of god will be yes and amen that's why it says that ye may be healed then it says the effectual fervent prayer of a of a righteous man availeth much you understand the words here he didn't say the prayer of a sleeping man of a dozing man of a yearning man of a lukewarm man or woman availeth much you see there are people that are so lazy and cold and lukewarm in prayer it's the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man you see the righteousness there it's very important we understand there must be righteousness be sure first of all that you are born again be sure that your institutions are made be sure that the blood of jesus has cleansed you and washed you from all unrighteousness be sure that christ is living the victorious life the righteous life in you and then you can go before the lord in prayer you'll demonstrate a dominion when you pray in a first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 verse 22 it says whatsoever we ask whatsoever spiritual things whatsoever material things whatsoever things that are relating to our family whatsoever things relating to other people whatsoever we ask we receive of him why because we keep his commandments you see the purity there you see the righteousness there you see the holiness there because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight when you do the things that are displeasing to god the things that annoy God, the things that show that you are rebellious and disobedient against God, it hinders your prayer. But John the Beloved, the Apostle, is telling us we are receiving answers to our prayer. And there are answers, miraculous things happening in our lives. And you know why? Because we do those things that are pleasing in His sight. In Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Reading there from verse 15 to verse 19. Psalm 34. 
verse 15 the eyes of the lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry you know when a righteous man kneels down to pray immediately you get god's attention god's ears are open to their cry then it says the face of the lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth you know the lord is unhappy with those who are living in sin the lord is unhappy with those perpetual backsliders who have gone back into sin and the lord is calling them back and they will not respond and their prayers are hindered they may go up and down they may fast and pray but you know it's not the fasting and the prayer alone that the lord is looking at he's looking at the foundation he's looking at your life he's looking at that purity and that holiness and that righteousness which gives you power and authority in prayer once it is there prayers are simple and they will be answered once it is not there then you understand why we're having failure in verse 17 the righteous cry the righteous they call upon the lord the righteous they pour their heart before the lord and the lord hear it and delivers them out of all their troubles how many of their troubles i said how many of their troubles we can be free from all those troubles and then you live a peaceful life in verse 18 the lord is near is nice unto them that of a broken heart and save as such as of a contrite spirit the people that are humble the people that are touched when the lord convicts them they have done something wrong they tremble before the lord those people they get their prayers answered in verse 19 many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivereth him out of them all in proverbs chapter Chapter 15, Proverbs chapter 15, reading there from verse 29. Proverbs 15, 29. Here it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. He heareth the prayer of the righteous. You understand now, salvation is very important. That means there's repentance, reconciliation, righteousness, redemption. It means you have come before the Lord, you repented of your sins. You said, Lord, I used to be a sinner and I used to love all those evil things, but I repent completely. And then you are reconciled with the Lord. You become a child of God. And then he imputes his righteousness into your life. And then you become one of the redeemed of the Lord. Number one, repentance. Number two, reconciliation. Number three, righteousness. Number four, you have that redemption. You see, that gives you boldness to come to the presence of the Father. Righteousness actually makes us to reign with Christ. We're told in the book of Proverbs, the righteous are bold as a lion. And you'll not be afraid of Satan's accusations because purity of heart gives you power and there is no power in prayer without heart purity the holy man standing on holy ground praying to a holy god lifting up holy hands with a holy mind and with holy motives in prayer cannot be denied but you know what we're told in that proverbs chapter 15 and verse 29 the lord is far from the wicked you see when an unrighteous man an unrighteous woman a person that has not dealt with the sin problem when he prays he has a problem because we're told i'm sure you know this verse of scripture let's look at it together again in psalm 66 psalm 66 and in verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, if I love iniquity in my heart, if I hide iniquity in my heart, if I cherish iniquity in my heart, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You see, sin hinders prayer. In fact, it was like the Lord was pushing them away when they came to pray. Those people that had not dealt with the problem of sin in their lives. In Isaiah chapter 1, reading from verse 15, and when you spread forth your hands i will hide mine eyes from you yea when ye make many prayers i will not hear your hands are full of blood you see that was said to the children of israel he said when you come and you make many prayers and you pray over prayer and over prayer i will not hear he says because your hands are full of blood we need to tell ourselves the truth no matter how many days you fast and no matter how much you pray if your hands are full of blood you must repent before you come to the lord in prayer I repent, I turn away from all my evil, and the Lord will have mercy upon you because he will forgive. But if the sin remains there, unconfessed, undealt with, then there will be no mercy at all. Look at it now in Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 24. Because I have called and ye refused. 
I called and you refused. He came to call us unto holiness. He said he has not called us unto uncleanness, but he has called us unto holiness. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God who has given us of his spirit. Because I called you unto holiness and you refused, and because I called you to my side, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, and you refuse. I stretch out my hand inviting you, and no man regarded, but ye have set at naught all my counsel, all my commandment, all my pleading, all my invitation, and will none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I pray God will not laugh when you are in trouble. I pray that God will not laugh when you are in calamity. If you don't want God to laugh at your calamity, you come to the Lord as he invites you. He says, I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. I called them to repentance and they did not answer. When they call upon me on their request, I will not answer to you. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They threw away my commandments. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices for the turning away of the simple, of the foolish of the one that remains in sin shall slay them and the prosperity of all shall destroy them but whosoever hearkeneth and listens and obeys the word of God hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil the Lord wants to answer your prayer in Proverbs chapter 28 Proverbs chapter 28, reading from verse 9. He that turneth away is ear from hearing the law. Even his prayer shall be abomination. He that turneth away is ear from hearing the word of God. No, I don't want to hear about holiness. He that turneth away is ears from hearing the word of the Lord. Even his prayer shall be abomination. You understand what the Bible is saying? It's saying that sin, iniquity, transgression, or disobedience will weaken a man in prayer. Pride and hypocrisy will keep a man far away from God and the promises of God will be far from such a person. The Bible is talking about the liar and the deceiver, the covetous and the idolater, the witch and the sorcerer, the thief and the wicked one, the unrepentant sinner, the ordinary churchgoer that doesn't bear the fruit of a repentance. He's wasting time praying. He's wasting time fasting. He's wasting time hoping and expecting an answer from the Lord because they and their prayers an abomination to God. If they are not free from sin, then they will not be free from Satan. They will not be free from oppressions of Satan. But the Bible says that godliness is profitable. Not only in this life, but in that which is to come. It means the holy and the righteous. They have a special place in God's heart, a special power in prayer that's unknown to many religious people. Salvation actually that brings holiness into our lives and uh, sanctification that perfects us in that holiness will make us to be awesome, will make us to be having dominion, will make us to have authority in the place of prayer. Now we come to number three, which is power and possession of praying people. The power and the possession of praying people. You're asking the question, perhaps, if I will dedicate myself, if I will give myself to prayer, if I will surrender myself to prayer, what difference will it make in my life? A lot of difference. A lot of difference. If you will consecrate, rededicate yourself to the Lord in prayer, we go back to that Genesis where we started. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, reading from verse 26, and then I join verse 28. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. Here is the angel of the Lord that had been sent to Jacob on purpose. And the Lord has sent his messengers to us on purpose. And yet there will be a test that will come to you. There will be a trial that will come to you. Let me go. And he had not given him the blessing, and the situation had not been changed. But he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. Here we now have the holy persistence. And 
and the secret determination of this man as he said i will not let thee go except thou bless me if you did that that sanctification holiness purity of heart without which no man shall see the lord will have been just long ago if you did as jacob did here i will not let you go except you bless me the baptism in the holy ghost the power of the spirit the anointing that comes from on high would have been upon your life long ago if you did as jacob did here you would have been healed and delivered long ago if you did as jacob did here all the family problems you have been carrying from year to year they would have been removed long ago jacob said i mean business with the lord there is something i want and i will not give up and i will not quit until i have the blessing from the lord i will not let you go except thou bless me you know the thing that jacob wanted he had prayed all through the night that's more than five minutes that's more than 30 minutes that's more than two hours he had prayed all the night and yet he said i've not got it yet i've not got it yet it reminds me of a particular woman her child had joined a bad gang and the child had gone away for a long long time and she was in church that sunday morning and the preacher was preaching and the preacher mentioned the prodigal son as the preacher mentioned the prodigal son he broke the heart of that woman and she began to cry and then after the service everybody prayed and then they went but she had darkness she had burden she had a heavy load on her heart because of that child and she just saw the picture of that prodigal son and she pictured in that far country and she pictured among the pigs where that prodigal son son was and she pictured her own son and she kept crying and crying and she was there at the church bench and then she was calling upon the Lord and calling upon the Lord and calling upon the Lord for one hour the body was still there for two hours the body was still there for three hours the body was still there about four hours after she had been praying and praying talking about his son before the Lord the body lifted and then she got up she had not seen the child yet she was just rejoicing and she was praising the lord and then she went home by the time she came for the next service there was a message and then as a preacher preached and then gave an altar call that child was coming on the aisle to receive the lord jesus christ that child had not been home for years that child had been away like the prodigal son the prayer of that woman brought the child back to the lord as the mother saw the child coming she had not seen that child for a long long time she rose up from where she was she went to that child and they went to the altar together and that child became saved and that mother was happy i'm telling you that the same thing can happen to your life we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and against power and if you are going to wrestle and you are going to pray the lord is going to answer your prayer for your own child for your own family for your own personal life for spiritual experiences you will have awesome power in prayer and all these things have been trying to claim all these years and you have not been able to get them the time has come for you to get them now why will you not rise up and say lord i've been wasting time long enough this is a year of prayer there will be holy persistence there will be sacred determination i keep myself to prayer this year i surrender myself to the lord this year i will stand on the promises of god i will claim the promises of god i will not let you go i will not let you go i will not let you go except you bless me may not always to pray and not to faith what's a burden in your heart what's a problem in your life what's the thing you are carrying about what's the problem that you have the lord is able to remove everything if you will call upon the lord and cry unto the lord he wants to answer your prayer right now he wants to answer your prayer you'll be persistent you'll be persistent you'll be persistent you'll be calling upon the lord it's more than five minutes prayer it's more than five minutes prayer more than ten minutes prayer waiting upon the Lord passing your cares upon the Lord seeking the face of the Lord with all your heart and all your soul I will not let you go I will not let you go if you are done what we are talking about now life would have changed situations would have been transformed and things would not have remained the same All the works of the devil destroyed. If you can pray, all these broken walls, raise them up again. Steadily walking with God, moving with God. 
If you can pray, things will change. People will change. Situations will change. Circumstances will change. Your family will change. Your friends will change. Your enemies will change. Everything will change if you can pray. Souls will come to the Lord. Many people will be saved if we can pray. The secret is persistent prayer. The secret is to have that holy persistence and holy determination in prayer. And the secret is to pray according to the word. Pray in the word. Pray by the word. Pray under the authority of the word. And you will never, never be the same again. What you have this year, what you experience this year, what you possess this year, will depend on the kind of prayer you pray this year.